Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul and it's time to travel to the 5 star island of OC to discuss everything that you need to know about the third day. Throughout this video we're going to be going over the entire show's plot and its ending so obviously there will be heavy spoilers here. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the third day. Okay, so the third day experience is actually cut up into three chapters that cover several characters as they try to get to the bottom of what's happening on the mysterious island of OC. The first is Summer which follows Sam played by Jude Law as he goes on a journey to discover the truth about his son's disappearance which just so happens to be tied to the island itself. The second part which was actually broadcast as a 12 hour live event on the island is called Autumn and this followed Sam as he was subjected to his trials. The third which is called Winter follows Sam's wife Helen, played by Naomi Harris as she searches for the answers to what happened to her husband. Now the inhabitants of OC believe that it is actually the soul of the world and that if things are amiss on the island, the rest of the planet will decay. Thus they see themselves as protectors and have sought out the descendants of a man known as Frederick Nicholas Charrington who we learn founded the island. Charrington took up the mantle of father and together with his followers they performed Celtic rituals in order to stop the world from getting sick. Charrington's grandson, who happens to be Sam's grandfather, ended up fleeing OC after he was disgusted by the ritualistic sacrifices that were performed and this is when things started to go awry. Sam's grandfather's brother took up the mantle himself but things just haven't been the same. Now the inhabitants believe that the direct offspring of Charrington must rule over them in order to keep the world in balance and thus they've sought out his descendants. Initially they wanted to use Sam's son Nathan and hired someone to kidnap him, however this ended up backfiring and thus they've pulled Sam back to the island so that he can return it to order. In the woods he comes across a girl named Epona who's attempting to end her own life and takes her back to OC which is when he's pulled into the true plot. OC is only accessible by a causeway that often floods and I thought it was brilliant how there was always this ticking clock in the background in which the characters had to get off the island before the tide rolled in. The first three episodes of the season pretty much chronicle this and we follow Sam as he discovers the truth about his son and his role on OC. After discovering Epona's body and learning that she sacrificed herself to try and heal the island, he ascends to the position of father. The previous father ends his life in front of him during the finale which which was it was a bit weird what wasn't it now anyway during his time on the island sam sleeps with a duplicitous woman known as jess and she ends up becoming pregnant with his child which we'll get into in just a bit he's also forced to do several trials as part of the autumn season and these include him digging his own grave and proving to the natives that he's the right person for the job these take place after a minor time jump and we get another one as we head into winter now Helen angered that Sam disappeared without a trace and took £40,000 from the family heads out to the island in order to retrieve the money. They're in debt over their heads and have no future if they're unable to pay off what's owed. Upon arriving on OC, Helen pretends that she's only taking her daughters Tallulah and Ellie out to celebrate the latter's birthday but slowly she unearths that something isn't right. With the causeway closing, Helen manages to find a place to stay and amongst the Martins she discovers Jess is about to give birth but will die if not given proper medical attention. Helen helps out and when interacting with the villagers, they lie to her about ever seeing Sam. However, she learns from one of the drunk locals that he was there and upon confronting the Martins, they lie and say that Sam disappeared from her in order to hide his infidelity. Helen goes to leave the island but just as they're vacating they spot Jess walking into the sea. They take her to a house on the seafront which is where she gives birth to Sam's daughter. Jess names her Epona and she goes to the original Epona's father Jason aware that the baby's life is in danger because there can only be one true descendant on the island. Now Jess tells Helen to go and get Sam and we end episode 5 with Helen coming face to face with her husband whilst Jess goes to attack Tallulah. Episode 6 picks up immediately after this with Helen confronting Sam on the dock. He says he stayed on the island because he found Nathan, however this is quickly shown to be a ruse and the boy is simply a distant relative. Helen tells us more about the child and that if he was truly alive he would be 16 and not the child that we've been seeing about OC. His race is also wrong and we learn that Sam has simply accepted this child as his son in order to mentally exonerate himself from his grief. 
people believe what they want to believe and will force things to fit a narrative in order to avoid accepting the truth and I think the series is chronicling the lengths that one will go to in order to avoid grief and despair. Sam has simply been searching for answers and Helen unveils all the theories and accusations that he held in order to find a reason to not force himself to accept that Nathan's disappearance was his fault. This operatic grief is all just a way of avoiding coming to terms with things and Sam would rather remain in this state than face real life. It turns out that Sam was supposed to be keeping an eye on him but instead he was on the phone with the woman that he was having an affair with. Sam spent 23 minutes and 17 seconds talking to her and I actually think that this holds a special meaning. Now in the Bible, Proverbs 23 17 read, Don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord, which ties not only into Sam, but also the island itself. Yes, that's, that's probably a reach. However, the idea of forgotten children is not only mirrored in Kale and Jess, but also Sam and Nathan, as well as Helen and her daughters, who she pretty much abandons on OC in order to find Sam. The fake Nathan has clearly been influenced by the evil of the island from what we see in his pictures and we discover that it was actually the islanders that were behind the real Nathan's death. Now they were truthful when stating that they were behind kidnapping him, however it did go far beyond that. Nathan realised what was happening and tried to escape which is when his kidnapper killed him. The islanders didn't even hand over the real Nathan's body and instead they sacrificed Jason's son and dumped Nathan in the causeway to cover up the crime. Now the episode really ramps up towards the end with the power struggle of both sides of the island coming out into the open. Throughout the season we've learned that there exists people who have faith in Sam and others that see him as a false prophet who's not fit to lead. Sam is worried that Ellie and Lou have been brought to the island and to face the danger of the natives wrath which is warranted as Ellie is now under the wing of Jess whilst Lula has to hide from the locals. Jess uses Ellie to draw the opposing islanders and Helen out and she calls a truce between the community, however she kills Mrs Martin who was one of the main reasons behind the uprising. They sedate her and then drown her so that should her body be discovered she would be seen as having drowned. Helen and Sam are taken to the oyster which is when Lula rescues them and the family spring into action. Helen forces Sam to come to terms with the fact that he lost Nathan and he kills some of the islanders and rescues Ellie. Sam gives Helen the cash from the altar but instead of leaving he remains behind with his truth which is that Nathan is still alive. Now the fake one does allude to a private conversation that he and Helen had which does hint at the boy perhaps being the real character. However, I think that this signifies the brainwashing that goes on on the island and how pretty much everyone has been forced into a role in some way in order to serve a purpose. Those that are team Sam are very much willing to give in to his fantasies and they even kept them up in order to make sure he maintained his position. I think that this is so ingrained into everyone that even this young child truly believes that he is Nathan. Now the other way that you can take it is that the mysticism we've been seeing on the island is correct and that in some ways Nathan is alive through this distant relative. I do think though that the main aesthetic of the show is about embracing the truth in spite of all the pain that will be caused and that it's better to be hit with the harshness of reality than to remain in a blanket of comforting lies. Nowhere is this more exemplified than in Helen's escape from the island at the end. Now she could easily remain behind on OC and live this lie with Sam but instead she puts her children in a boat, ties the rope on it around herself and swims out into the icy cold waters in order to escape from OC. It's a harrowing scene that's agonising to watch but at some point she turns around and witnesses a vision of Nathan sat on the boat. Now to me this symbolises that she's not only saved her children but also the idea of the real Nathan who will live on in her memories instead of the fake one which Sam has remained behind with. She uses this to fight on through the water and makes the escape that Sam was once unable to. Sam shared a similar journey to Helen and almost made it off the island himself, however he was convinced to go back. Now this shows the oppositions of grief and how some will accept the circumstances and move on whilst others like Sam will remain in whatever lie they tell themselves. There are theories that state Helen is the true mother of the island just as Sam is the father but unlike him she turns away from her destiny and the pageantry that surrounds it. This is much like how Sam's ancestor did when he realised that life on OC would subject him and his offspring to several tragedies and thus she makes the right decision. 
Helen makes it to the shore and Ellie and Lula take their mother to a nearby house and we see that she's suffering from hypothermia. However, they manage to warm her and Helen holds on tightly to what she thinks is Nathan's shirt. However, it's really the bag of money and we realise that both she and Sam have been hit with the same disaster but they've chosen to handle it differently. Helen now has a way to buy her and her family out of debt while Sam will forever be trapped in his mind state. Now though we don't know what will happen to the island, we do know that Sam isn't taking things lying down and that he's willing to kill for his position. There's also the possibility of the police arriving at the island to investigate all the deaths and I think that one way or the other, OC will fall. Now this is of course a pretty nihilistic way to look at things but we do end with the sun shining which does have a hopeful message to it and I think that Sam's offspring at the very least will be okay even if he's not. Anyway that ends the season and the third day and I love how we had this constant repetition of three cycles in both the days and seasons. I really enjoyed what happened in the show and I highly doubt that we'll get a second entry but if you're watching this video for, for whatever reason without seeing it then I do recommend that you check it out. Third Day was a show that kept me constantly guessing and I did have a lot of fun with it. Overall I think it was a bit of a slow burn but it definitely deserves your attention and at only 6 episodes you know it's not going to take that long to watch. Third Day was great and though I'm not sure if fully delivered in the end, I still did have a lot of fun and it gets a 7.5 out of 10. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ending and the series as a whole so make sure you comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video then please drop a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of the Lovecraft Country finale which is going to be linked at the end. Don't forget we're also giving away 3 copies of the Marvel Phase 1 box set and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 30th of October and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on the Discord server linked in the description or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Paul. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.